Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So, in 3D work, introducing imperfections and camera artifacts is one of the key ways to make your art feel more real and more cinematic. And one of the most common camera artifacts is glare, or diffraction. I've made a lot of videos on space-based imagery on this channel, and if you look at images from real space telescopes, you'll see that we often have these diffraction spikes. The Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes both especially have these iconic diffraction patterns, for example. But you also see this in regular cameras, and you actually see this with your eye too. If you look at a very bright sort of point source, you'll see a diffractive sort of glow or haze around it. So now in this video, I'm going to be showing y'all how you can add truly realistic diffraction spikes or glare to your artwork easily and for free. So to start out, we're going to be using a free software from GitHub called RealBloom. There's a link in the description below. And you're just going to want to download the latest version, this 0.7.0 beta. And we'll go all the way down to the bottom of the page. You just want to download this zip file. While you're waiting for that to download, I want to mention that if you really want to understand the physics and the mechanics of what we're going to be doing, which I always encourage, this video by Andre the Great is probably the best explanation out there, and I highly recommend checking it out. There's a link in the description below as well. So now, once you've got it downloaded, we're just going to navigate here to our file, Real Bloom, find our .exe file, and open this up. Everything runs pretty well by default on startup. And if you look over here, you'll see we have this list of slots. And this is going to sort of be like our workflow from A to B to C, etc. And so I'm just going to take you through a very basic workflow for how I would use this. And very fortunately for us, the creator of Real Bloom actually included some demo files to try the software out with. So I'm just going to select Diffraction Input, come over here to Browse, and you'll have to navigate from your file down here to Demo, and we're going to want an aperture for diffraction. This is basically just what the final hole as you're trying to look through the camera looks like. And so I'm going to go with a hexagon. You can see it's got some artificial like blemishes here, so it's not a perfect formation, which is, of course, what it would be like in reality. And for our diffraction, we just come over here and we just select Compute. There we go. And you can see we now have something that actually looks like a diffraction spike, and this is sort of the idea behind it. Now, one thing, though, is you'll notice this is all just white, and so we're going to move this from our diffraction result to our dispersion input, and then we're just going to come over here and apply dispersion, and now you can't really see it, but we actually have a gradient. Actually, here, if I boost my exposure, you can see now we have a sort of blue to red gradient going on here, which is the effect of different wavelengths of light, being scattered at slightly different angles. And so I'm going to turn this exposure way back down. By the way, if you want to enter a specific value here, you just control click to do that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take our dispersion results and we're going to move this to our convolution kernel. This is really important. The kernel is sort of the shape of your glare. The input is just the image that you want to apply the glare to. So now for my convolution input, I'm just going to go browse. We'll come up to our demo here, images, and I'm going to select the leaves. This one sort of shows the effect really well. And we can just click convolve here. And there we go. You can see that sort of applied this glare effect to our image. I'm going to lower this way down though. Our sun is very, very bright. And just off the bat, you can see how this adds a ton of realism. And if you adjust the exposure over here, you can see how that affects it across the image. You can also just adjust the exposure of the convolution layer. You can also use additive blending to preserve more fine details. You can see if I go entirely to the convolution layer and just remove the entire input image, then I get all this sort of haze effect with all the diffraction and the glare, which we like that. But we can also keep this original input to preserve all our fine details, which I really like. Depending on what your scene is, you might want to use one or the other. And so it is pretty cool. Real Bloom comes with a few pre-made kernels. If you come down to this folder, we have one, for example, like the James Webb Telescope. If we go here, click Convolve, you can see we get the James Webb Telescope sort of look. 
And of course, you can make more using all those apertures. But if you want, I actually did just release a pack with some pretty cool kernels based on cinema cameras, the Hubble and James Webb Space Telescopes, both with much higher resolutions over on my Gumroad. So you can check that out if you like. And so now the last thing I'm going to go over is the sort of proper pipeline to bring your Blender renders into here and then back into Blender. So I've got a fresh render here using my new black hole setup, and I want to bring it into real bloom. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my color management, and I'm going to select my sequencer. It's by default going to be sRGB. You want it to be ACES CG. This just helps to preserve the largest amount of detail in the color values. Then we can come back here, and I'm going to go image, save as, and we need our file format to be open EXR. This will preserve the true radiance values, so we can have values greater than one in terms of our luminosity, which is really important because we're doing a bunch of fancy math with light. For the color depth, I like to keep this at full. It doesn't impact the file size too, too much, and I like to preserve that kind of detail when I'm moving my image around a lot. For my codec, I like to use DWAA. By default, Blender likes to use Zip because it's lossless, but Honestly, DWAA compression is perfectly fine for almost all cases, and it makes your file sizes way more manageable. So I'm just going to go ahead and save my file now. Now we can jump back into Real Bloom, and I'm just going to jump to the convolution input, and I'm going to clear, go to browse, and we're going to select my image. For my kernel, let's go, we'll do something different again. We can go with octagonal, maybe. There we go. That looks pretty cool, pretty cinematic. And now I'm just going to click Convolve. And you can see, okay, we don't have too much, but let's raise this up. Raise up this exposure. And you'll notice my image doesn't look really like it did inside of Blender. Don't worry, though. This is only a temporary effect, and everything will come out looking fine in the end. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uncheck additive and I'm going to just do only the convolution layer. Maybe boost my exposure just a touch. And now I'm going to save this image. I'll save it to the same place. Now I can come back into Blender. And if I hop over into my compositor space, here we go. We'll add in the old viewer node, make sure backdrops enabled. And I'm just going to add in an image, do to do, do desktop, we'll get our second guy, here we go. And you're going to see by default the color space is actually set to linear rec 709. We need to switch this to our aces CG because that is what we saved it as in the sequencer. Now I'll just grab a mix color, set this to add, and we'll plug in this. You can see now we can just add our diffraction on top of our original image and we get this really awesome sort of cinematic glow effect. And actually the reason I chose this image specifically is to highlight this fact, which is, you know, I was showing a lot of examples with really big sort of noticeable diffraction spikes. But in this case, it's actually just more of a soft glow that's being added. You have some diffraction over here where the really bright part is but overall it's actually just adding a nice glow if you really look over here it makes this so much more pleasant to look at and so that was just something I wanted to highlight from a more artistic perspective is that this can really bring your artwork to a higher level artistically and so that was just something I really wanted to show and to sort of drive home is that this is applicable for really all kinds of renders even ones that won't have big iconic diffraction spikes I've always tried to drive home the point that compositing really is like the secret sauce you need to make your work look really professional and really high quality. And I think this is a great tool to have to do that. Also, if you are wondering, because I know I was, Real Bloom does support image sequences, so you can do animations. Now, the bad news is that I'm not going to cover it in this video, but I will put a direct link to the part of the GitHub page where the creator goes over how you can do it. You do have to use the command line interface, but the developer provides pretty much all the basic stuff you need. And I'll make you guys a deal. If enough comments ask for it, I will make an addendum video on how to process image sequences. 
And yeah, that's the video, folks. Just to mention again, I do have that pack of kernel images, high quality, really cool, available on my Gumroad. Also a really cool way to support the channel if you like. There's a link below. I hope you enjoyed the video. Consider liking, subscribing, all the YouTube jazz if you did. And leave a comment if there's some VFX thing you'd like me to make a video about in the future. I hope you guys found this useful, and I'll see y'all next time.